Okay, let's start. I have to be careful because a lot of people from my projects are sitting here, even in the first row. And uh, yeah, I noticed that I've done a lot of projects uh, with the German administration uh, about open source. Actually, what I normally do is I do Kubernetes security in critical infrastructure and uh, created companies um, doing system automation, databases, and I noticed even I did GitOps with subversion before Git was really existing. Sometimes I do pro bono projects, and this is more or less the history. So um, my first contact with the German parliament was in 2001. I've pitched for SUSE uh, Linux and was quite a success because the server side at that time moved to Linux and we have been uh, very aggressive and even wanted to take the desktop, but uh, at least this was not successful. But the, the server side was quite successful at that time. Then I received an invitation um, because somebody wanted to have a cloud strategy and this was, in, in Germany we have this um, federal and German lender or countries uh, common planning council, they plan together the IT strategy. And this is a very slow process because you need a lot of uh, communication and this uh, takes some time. And in uh, 2022, uh, uh, there was a study that uh, we heavily depend on Microsoft Office and this is a little bit single vendor strategy and in 2023 the same with databases. So everybody wanted to do something with digital sovereignty. And therefore, um, I started a little bit pro bono at that time to contribute to this uh, German administration cloud strategy. And they have a kind of framework how to implement it. And because they asked me, um, I've definitely said, okay, in this year, we only can create cloud native strategies. This means uh, no, for, no VMware or no self-grown virtualization, just cloud native strategy. This means Kubernetes everywhere. And this is what I help them to implement. This means on the other side, we have a lot of things simply cut off. All the technologies, virtualization, is not focus of that strategy. And uh, as a global uh, strategy, I implemented more or less, or I just read the um, cloud native uh, DevSecOps strategy. So there is a paper from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which is uh, the big sister of the Linux Foundation our days together with the US uh, Department of Defense and uh, this is a DevSecOps process because I definitely wanted to have DevOps inside um, for agility and to um, move forward even if I knew that nobody would really just commit code and then it would immediately run on, on government servers but having these steps in mind means simply we are able to do quick fixes, we, are, we have the right processes, uh, and uh, what I've seen in, this, uh, in the next project, that we even have the people from the BSI, so the German uh, Office for Information Security, and they are able to play the SEC part in this DevSecOps strategy. This is important because otherwise, um, you don't have security implemented and the security in the German federal infrastructure is not so brilliant, just to say. And this has been evolved from version 1 up to now to version 2.5.5. It's uh, quite mixed in the level of detail. If you read it, it's a German uh, it's, it's compromise, federalism, several ministries, uh, 16 federal states or so the Bundesländer, and effectively it's neither a strategy, not a framework, but it is a list of useful best practices, and at least it's a starting point to evolve into that direction and to implement things. 
Uh, and um, yeah, it, it's a starting point for digital serenity. Uh, I have a little bit of problem with the concept because it's not well defined and always if something is not well defined, I have to explain what it's really about. We see a lot of sovereignty washing. We have uh, sovereign clouds of big vendors everywhere. And what we also see is that because this is coming from the legal domain, it is a territorial approach. And digital technology is not territorial, at least not only. So, and what we have put into this uh, first framework is the definition, for example, that you not only have to have the data in your country, in your own data centers, but also have the sovereignty to exchange the keys and the algorithms for en encryption everywhere. Nobody has read this for two years, and then after a while, they, uh, people took notice about that. And then uh, there was an uproar. All the cloud providers and the Bitcoin in Germany told that, yeah, he wants to forbid public clouds. No, this even works in public clouds, but you have to address the right people. The next step in this uh, process was also a little bit pro bono work, designing uh, the general strategy for open code. This is a GitLab-based open source repo, a wiki, and is able to drive CI-CD pipelines. And why are we not using GitHub for everything? Because it, this is aligned with German law, and we can only use OSI licenses. This has been a little bit diluted, I've heard yesterday, but effectively, this is a central repo for the entire German administration. Everybody in the German administration simply could use it. We have nearly now 5,000 users, uh, only 200 bots, I've heard, uh, 2,000 repos, 600 groups, and we have important projects, most important project at the moment, because they are doing their release immediately, is the BMI Open Desk project, so the sovereign workplace. This is also a cloud-native desktop solution. Just to notice, this is a cloud-native desktop. What you also see there is, for example, um, medical data from the Robert Koch Institute. They publish the infection rates every day. And critical software like the Bundes Messenger for the German Army, which is a matrix-based product. Funny, it's called BOOM. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these are the jokes uh, they make sometime. This is a look of OpenDesk, just uh, to remind you, yes, it's a little bit, looks a little bit uh, cool and uh, not very emotional, but effectively it will work. Uh, this is, uh, these are the components, and here you see uh, all the companies uh, in Germany who have implemented parts of it. It's very similar to the, uh, to the French landscape. Uh, we have um, an uh, identity and access management. We have word processing with Collabora. We have uh, Nextcloud inside Open Project XWiki, Cryptpad. Nordic is doing a lot of um, development on top of Element, so Matrix. We have also Open Exchange, and inside Elements there is GC as a solution. I hope this is still okay. And in principle, you can add your projects. For example, if you want to have a low-code platform, you could add a Cortesa, which is a French company, for adding low-code logic. Or you could implement search engines, which is also um, a nice idea. These are the versions. See a lot of components, therefore it's a little bit a challenge to synchronize all this and to test it. So it's, a, it's quite a complex project. Uh, lessons learned. In this process, uh, we have lots of uh, original vendor products. And if I say open washing is sometimes a problem, uh, we have to notice these companies are small companies. If Google gives away something like Kubernetes, 
it's a small step for Google. But for all these companies we have in this project, they are more or less giving away the crown jewels and they have to uh, sometimes the idea that they protect a little bit, uh, at least intellectual property, for example, um, if they want to have carrier grade uh, capabilities, it might be that some components uh, have a little bit of uh, open core project and not a fully open source project. But this is normally in this size of environments not very important. Most of the project, uh, components at that time have not been cloud native. So this was a challenge to move them into containers and run them inside Kubernetes. Uh, in the beginning, the original version, which was an, uh, a version from a German uh, Anstalt Öffentlichen Rechts, so I don't know the English word for that, it took three months to install a single instance. And this is not acceptable. We have uh, 11,000 municipalities in Germany. If thousands of them would have had the wish to get installed, this means uh, we need 1,000 times three months. This is a lot. We, then we are in Star Trek next generation, somewhere in the 21st century. And uh, cloud native is not completely accepted at the moment, or wasn't at the beginning of the project. So there was a little bit of reluctance, not to say re resistance. And uh, nobody had experience with cloud native security. This was a little bit of a challenge uh, at the end. Uh, with the guidelines from the BSI, we had definitely network layer uh, security based on network policies or how they call it, micro-segmentation. We also have a package filter application gateway and another packet filter inside it that, that you definitely have as a security which is uh, required by the BSI. The integration is sometimes hard. The requirement also was to do the architecture in TOGAF, and TOGAF has, if you don't know it, uh, some security framework, ZAPSA, which is older than the BSI, but nobody knows it. So it was a little, everybody was a little bit skeptical, but at the end we could uh, convince the officials. And now we have the SEC in DevSecOps by the officials, and the next release of OpenDesk really will be a 1.0 release. So this means it is updatable. It will, uh, can be, the security concept can be generalized. And what in the project also happened that it is not only if you are in the right environment appropriate for confidential documents, but also for secret documents, which is really dependent on your environment. So this is will be a little bit difficult. This is the architecture. This is public on the uh, side of the German Federal Ministry of the Interior. And uh, unfortunately, only in German, but you can ask me. So this is the security architecture. The red lines are the borders of the microservice uh, microsegmentation. And you can read it uh, there and here in this thin layer, we have the packet filter hidden in a ingress gateway. This is still the CNCF DevSecOps approach. And this will be taken over by the Zendis, uh, which is a German OSPO. They now have contracts for open code and, and uh, open desk given to some companies. It started uh, effectively, Zendis started end of 2023 and now has uh, successful international connections. Unfortunately, the budget is not very, ho uh, very high. So uh, we have uh, not really big money from the government behind all these initiatives. It's the same with the sovereign cloud stack, which is, uh, if you don't like Kubernetes, but uh, need to run all our virtual machines uh, or have to replace VMware, there's a sovereign cloud stack which is also run out of funding now. Completely unknown, but this is, as far as I know, also a very successful project. The German health offices, uh, Gesundheitsämter, 
will have a new version of the software in October. This has been announced at FrostCon uh, last month. And behind this is Bianca Castle, and she has uh, been able to create contracts with a company who has no experience with open source to give all this uh, away, and you can then download it also from open code and have software for healthcare also uh, for free, and this can be used internationally. This is also a 20 million project. Nobody knows it. Upcoming soon, uh, we'll have a new version of the cloud framework in March 2025. Uh, there will be something about public clouds, how to migrate to other vendors, and uh, probably about artificial intelligence uh, policies. Stay tuned, um, and this will be published if it has passed the IT Planning Council, and the probable release is 2025 March. Yeah, there it is. Unfortunately, what is missing, so this is the German administration landscape. 500 microservices would be necessary and we would need persistence. So the Verwaltungsregister project is not really fully implemented. And we have problems with uh, the networks in the public administration. So therefore it's quite important that you can now in the future, hopefully, use a mutual TLS uh, instead of VLANs or um, other things. What we always see, there is too much hype about uh, new technologies. So blockchain was a big hype. It's dead now. We see a lot of hype around AI, large language models, and so on, which is not well-defined because there are not really well-defined use cases. See a lot of political influence in, in Germany. The German Chancellor failed to uh, give um, a big part of the um, technology to Delos, which is a SAP, Microsoft, and so on consortium. And they have uh, really not recognized that this is a federal approach, and every every country has the same. Uh, same vote as a, um, as, as a federal government. Also, sometimes we see something like this, that people say open desk is just a loaded gun on the table if we negotiate with Microsoft. This was a citation from uh, Wolfgang Schmidt, who is uh, Kanzleramtsminister, so he is the second man behind the German chancellor. Another project which is also very successful, and uh, people are also here, Fiona and the others, uh, is the Sovereign Tech Fund. Uh, I had a, the chance to a little bit steal the ideas from the Open SSF, including the financial numbers. I looked into four completely different projects, and uh, it's a recommendation. The recommendation is public. At the moment, the most important projects you see here are from FreeBSD, Log4j, and so on. Curl is in it, uh, and uh, it's sometime uh, it's somehow so ex so successful that it now had uh, continuous uh, funding in the next year. But this was a political find behind the scenes. Conclusions: Yeah, we see a lot of movement. And the driver is digital sovereignty. Unfortunately, if you compare the office licenses, we see investment in open desk in that time, it's a little bit unfair. Nevertheless, at the moment, we have a strategy evolving. It's slowly getting out of the mud. Uh, we see a lot of reluctance and resistance. We have first real projects, a lot of promising initiatives. Still low budget, but the sharing with the European partners has started, as you have heard in the talk before. So let's continue this way and form a definitely uh, yeah, a business unit or a Linux Foundation uh, project out of that. If you have questions, I'm here for the next days and 
Here is how you can reach me. Thank you. So may you have time for... I, I want to point out something. Um, this is the new beard, see? Like when you do many projects, then eventually you have this like yeah, long this is, list. Um, <laughs> every is, uh, everything is five years. So one one question. Yeah. Yeah, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I read a, an article on Heise that the German federal government has given out a contract worth quite a few millions to build a MS-365 competitor. Um, is that a new version of OpenDesk or is this something else? Uh, this is, uh, um, I don't know if it, if it can compete with uh, Microsoft 365, but effectively this is OpenDesk. And it has a little bit a different focus. And uh, for example, you have a wiki, and, and it, it, it is small uh, than, than standard OpenDesk. Uh, if, if you want to compare it with this technology stack, it also has parts of SharePoint and um, shared directory, which is based on Keycloak and something like this. So I don't know how this will scale. But effectively, uh, for the daily work in an uh, office in the German administration, it should be not only good enough, but uh, probably sometimes better than, than Microsoft 365. But we will see in the future.